Hey guys, Mike here. If you're new to my channel, my channel is all about concrete. Thanks for clicking on my thumbnail. If you're a returning a viewer, thanks for coming on back. And we're, today we're pouring about a 2,600 square foot house and garage. Now I only got the house on the video today. I'll have the garage on a separate one. But we're working for the foundation contractor today. So the, the foundation contractor is actually working for the general contractor who's the builder. Now for us, the, the guy that does the concrete walls right there, those are actually aluminum forms he uses. He just calls me up and he's like, Mike, I got a floor to do in about three to four weeks. Uh, can you put me on your schedule? So that's what we do. We put him on our schedule and today's that day. So all we're really hard to do here is come in and pour and power trial finish the concrete floor. Now Jim works out all the details with the builder when he when he estimates the floor as far as what kind of concrete he's using what kind of reinforcement he's using all that stuff so today we're using 3500 psi concrete with fiber mesh in it uh, we got a mid-range water reducer in it so we can we can loosen it up and pour it kind of loose make it easy this one it didn't have the greatest access the garage foundation was kind of in the way we couldn't back in or around that and then the house had also bumped out a little bit in the front so this was about as close as we could get a truck that's why we're using our 12 foot chute there but there still was quite a bit of pulling and pushing on this one as you'll notice um, and that's sometimes that's just part of the deal rather than rather than get a pump truck for nine hundred dollars here and just pump this it really wasn't that much extra work just to pull it around a little bit especially when you got the water reducer in it the water reducer adds about, you know, three bucks a yard extra. So 30 some odd yards at three bucks is about another 100, 150 bucks. So there's quite a bit of savings versus pumping. Plus the pump leaves kind of a mess behind too. Afterwards, when he washes out, he's got quite a bit of concrete right left in the hopper. Even though he can pump some back in the truck, he still leaves quite a bit of charge right on the ground. Another thing that makes this easy today is we're using the battery powered mbw screed demon you're going to get to see just how easy this thing makes the floor to screed the house floor is roughly you know 2,000 square feet and i'm going to show you right here if you keep watching till the end of the video you'll see just how nice and easy this thing does makes it makes it easy screeding i'm actually if you look at the amount of effort i'm putting into it <laughs> it's almost like none i basically got to just balance the handles Keep the, the front of that blade from digging in. I want to try to keep it as flat as possible, but I don't want it to dig in. And then Luke and Darren and Tia there, they're the ones doing most of the work, keeping the concrete as close to grade as possible. They want to keep it a little bit high. They definitely don't want to get it low. But they don't want to keep it too high. So Otherwise, it does get a little hard to pull back if it's too high. So you can see them guys, they're just raking, going right to town, raking, and I'm just slowly, steadily pulling backwards while I'm giving it the throttle. And I don't even, I'm not even giving it full throttle right here. This is probably half, three-quarter throttle. I could crank it right up if I wanted to go a little bit faster, but no, no real need to go that much faster. See, Darren's pulling back quite a bit of charge right there, so... We got it a little bit high in there, but it's, it's actually easier to pull it back like this than it is if you're low and you want to try pushing it in. That second truck is backing in now over to the right on the other side of the foundation. As soon as we get this screeded down, we'll get that second truck pulled out. And then the third one's going to be showing up shortly for the garage. So we know that, you know, we don't have to really hurry, but we just want to, we want to be steady here. You can see how nice and smooth that makes it. It makes, look how easy the bowl floating is. It just down and back. And it, it smooths that right out really, really nice. There's no, there's no dips or humps there. You know, once you get the hang of this thing, it gets the floors really flat. Giving you a couple different angles for this. Had a couple cameras going on this one. That's Jim right there. There's the foundation guy. He's hooking that chute up. 
he's he's kind of a one man crew. He he does have a guy or two that'll help him every once in a while, but he's uh, pretty much a one man crew most of the time. Does all these foundations, whether they're four feet, eight foot. He can even stack and go higher. So he's he does a lot of work by himself doing these foundations. Darren's over there. He's setting a wet pad using the laser. We'll strike those wet pads with a hand screed. That's just, we don't have to. We could use the power screed to strike them. We just, we've always just done it that way. So that's kind of the way we do things. You can see how far that chute came there. The truck chute got about halfway into the house. So in order to make it a little easier, we're using a 12 foot chute today. We got a bunch of those chutes. But today we'll use the 12 footer, just pull it around. Luckily, you know, the most of the residential floors here are four inches thick. This one's got the radiant heat tubes in it. Most of these guys that, the heating guys that do the heat tubes here, they put the two inches of styrofoam down then they'll staple those tubes right to the styrofoam. Um, if they use the right staples, the tubes stay in place really, really good. And we don't have to worry about them lifting or anything when we go to, especially when we go to saw the floor later on after troweling. Some guys will put the wire down and they'll tie the tubes to the wires too, but sometimes that wire mesh is, is hard to find. And it's kind of expensive too that way. You can just see how much pushing and pulling goes into, you know, pouring out a 30-yard floor. There's quite a bit to it. But at the right slump, you know, if you pour at the right slump, that's the key with using those water reducers, guys. If, if you have the right slump, you're not going to kill yourselves. And when you do this stuff every single day, like we do, pouring every day, first thing in the morning every day, then the, slump, the water reducers really just, they're kind of a no-brainer. I don't know. Our companies, it's just quite normal up here for the companies up here to have them. If yours doesn't have them, you could search online for them. I know uh, Master Builders is one of the companies that sells them. Grace Products is another company that sells them. Those are the companies that the ready mix companies buy from. And then, you know, they just put it right in at the plant when they batch the truck out. Like that slump right there is probably, you know, six and a half, seven slump. And but when he, before he puts the water reducer in, it's like a three slump. So that's how much it loosens it up. Definitely don't like killing ourselves, that's for sure. Doing this, doing this on a daily basis, you know, for eight or nine months straight out of the year we usually have about three months when it's just really cold and we don't pour every single day we still pour sporadically during december january and february but it's definitely not every day i tell everybody we got to get 12 months of work in in about eight and a half <laughs> so we got we got to make up for those colder months by doing double duty when it's nicer out. Today's a really nice day. This is actually uh, kind of like a, a late spring, early summer type of day here. Yeah, you can see how that pulls that back really, really nice. You can, you know, I got a link for those down in the description if you want to check them out. MBW has this battery one. We, we actually put a Milwaukee battery in there. This one's only a 5 amp battery. You can put bigger ones if you want. I've never had any trouble uh, doing a whole floor like this with just a 5 amp battery. Never run the battery out. But you can check them out down in the description. They also have a gas powered one that's really nice. That one works really good. Um... And then we use their power trials too. The power trials are really, really good. That thing's probably about 35, between 35 and 40 pounds like that. That's a 12 foot board on it. You can get a bigger board too. You can get 14, you can get 16, you can get smaller ones. 
We, we generally like the 12 for most things. We could use a 14 a lot if we had it. But the 12 is, is plenty good enough. T is really good at scree uh, raking the creek too. So it all of us can run that thing, even Tia. And it doesn't matter who's raking behind. We just... One person grabs it, and then we just go, and then you can see Darren over there. He's screeding in around those pipes, using the small hand screed, getting that little area done. This is what I mean about striking our pad. So we make a wet pad using the laser, and then we'll strike off that area with just a hand screed. No special reason why. We just This is just the way we do it. That's a 14-footer. And then we'll just run the screed right down it like that. And that gets that gets the floors really, really accurate as far as being flat. There's no guessing or anything. I'm just, if you watch my head, I'm going back and forth looking at the left side of the screed versus the right side. And just making sure they're both always touching those wet pads at all times. They actually leave a tiny little bit of a line behind when I know I'm, I'm right on. So that makes the that takes all the guesswork right out of it. I guess I'm the one screeding the whole floor on this one today. Usually, Darren and Luke will jump right in there and grab that thing. Yeah, you can see how Darren's pulling that back, leaving just a little bit there for me to me to pull back while that thing vibrates. Those pipes in the floor there, that's going to be some type, some a bathroom. There'll be like a shower there or a tub. That's why you see that box in the floor like that. And those round things with the yellow cap on them, those are going to be outlets in the floor. A lot of times when those guys put them in, they'll put them in right flush with the top of the concrete. But he'll just cut them off and then he'll put his outlets right in the floor. They're probably, they're going to, I think they're going to do some type of hardwood flooring on this one. We like just finishing around those little boxes in the pipe areas with a small screed like that rather than trying to maneuver that big 12 foot board around there. It's a that's a pretty good sized house. You can see how easy the screeding is with that. You know, especially when you got three or four people that all everybody knows what they're doing. The total time to pour this floor was probably like you know 35 40 minutes seeing as though we had to pull so much of it around but it doesn't take long the third truck is sitting there now waiting for the garage so that's why we're we're hustling to get this done and get that garage poured so if you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe come on back i'll have the garage on the next video but again uh there's tia Watch how easy that bow floats. She'll maneuver that right in between those outlets. Just down and back. Then she's done. Move it over to the next one. So bow floating is really fast when you go behind one of those things. But again, I want to thank you for watching. Come on back. We'll see you on the next one.